In my long life, I have traveled extensively on the federal highways and country roads of the United States. I've explored most areas of the country and witnessed many strange occurrences. Therefore, I believe in the peculiar stories that unfold on the roads, the so-called phenomena of mysterious highways. I firmly believe that anything can happen in life. Allow me to share a story of an unusual phenomenon I experienced on a winter road not far from Birmingham. This took place in November 1994. My partner and I were driving a Kamas truck back home from the Alabama region. We had smoothly transported several tons of high-quality fresh frozen seafood to Mobile from New Orleans. However, the return journey was an empty one. I remember that trip being quite challenging. Nothing went as planned initially. There were some temporary delays and two minor breakdowns along the way. The round trip covered a distance of 3,000 miles. It took nearly a week. We were quite exhausted. When the incident occurred, I was behind the wheel. By then, I had been steering for eight consecutive hours. Our convoy deviated from the plan, so wherever conditions allowed, we sped forward at the highest possible speed. And I was eager to get home, my wife and I were attending a close friend's wedding. It was a pitch black night. The sky was shrouded in a grayish fog. Sometimes, the silver moon pierced through the mist, revealing a normal visibility, the road, snow-covered plains, everything crystal clear. It was well past midnight. Music played softly. My partner was tired, dozing off in the cabin. The road was flat, no bumps, no swaying. The night was silent, with just my partner and me driving a lonely Kamas toward Memphis. The gray fog once again swallowed the moon, deepening the darkness of the night. Visibility decreased, so I slowed down. Suddenly, in the high beams, I saw a horse rider in the middle of the road. Behind him, a herd of cows was moving across the road in an orderly fashion. I hit the brakes. The groaning sound of the multi-ton truck barely stopped in time, just a few meters from the horns and hooves of the animals. Almost stopped right in front of them. I uttered an exclamation, angered by the situation. In response, I heard the excited mooing of the cattle and the shouts of the shepherds. I felt confused. Why were there cows on this winter night? Where were they being herded to? Moreover, at this late hour, the herd was massive, forming a colorful stream as they passed by the windshield. About five minutes had passed, but it showed no signs of ending. I decided to leave the cabin, stretch my legs, and breathe the cold air. I had barely grasped the door handle when all the animals suddenly disappeared. I was startled. Opening my eyes, I stared at the road. No cows, no shepherds. I cautiously walked down the road, looking around. No hoofprints on the roadside. It sent a chill down my spine. I thought, this must be a miracle. Just an illusion. Oh, surreal. Even now, I still feel it was so real. It was just exhaustion. There should be a small town ahead at this position. Probably about 20 kilometers away. I told myself that once I reached there, I would park the truck in a parking lot and rest for a while. I returned to the cabin and continued driving. Suddenly, I found myself driving down the central street of a town I didn't recognize. I drove along this street, looking around. I couldn't understand. The entire street and buildings were brightly lit like Christmas trees. Strange advertisements were everywhere. At that time, I hadn't seen anything like this in Birmingham. I saw electronic signs showing 3 a.m. In the 90s, the streets of the city were usually deserted at this time of night. But here, I saw many pedestrians. 
for a small town, it was quite lively for a winter night in 94. Stopped at a red light at the intersection. Looking around, trying to understand what was happening. No, it wasn't a small town, it was a big city. Did I somehow reach Memphis? Impossible. Because I still had a long way to go. And there should be a turn before that. What surprised me was not that I entered a bend, but that I drove directly into the city. And I felt nervous. A long time passed, and I suddenly realized the red light was still on. Was it broken? I looked to the right, then to the left. The surroundings here made me uneasy. I shook my head. The street and buildings vanished into thin air. All around was darkness, and I stood in the middle of a plane. Apparently, I was just in some unknown place. In a ghost town. I sobered up a bit. Decided to continue driving. And apparently, I was overly exhausted, actually falling asleep while driving. Waking up at the most dangerous moment. I saw that the car was speeding into a ditch. Fortunately, I managed to correct and stop in time. The impact hit my chest, leaving a bruise. I was sleeping. Later, I tried to reconstruct, and the result was that the steering wheel was still in my hands. Likewise, I had no idea on that night which city streets I was driving on. I've driven on them many times before and after but on the roads of that place, there has never been a city. Take care of yourself and your partner because their health and lives are in your hands. Now, another mysterious tale from the life of a long-haul truck driver. For those relentless skeptics, this story is just another reason to claim, you're all lying. Yet, for some, it is another piece of evidence proving that the world around us is full of magical mysteries and enigmatic secrets. You may not believe it, but on the highways of the United States, extraordinary events frequently occur, with an increasing number of records every year. I personally know a driver who experienced some inexplicable things, leading him to change his profession and alter his perspectives on life. His name is Anthony. I've known him for a long time. He's a serious, responsible person who doesn't indulge in fantasies. For a while, he successfully worked as a truck driver, transporting goods for a large retail chain network. He enjoyed the job, satisfied with the working conditions and income. However, after an incident on the American highways, he changed his career and some views on life. One time, he needed to pick up cargo in New York City and then deliver it to the base in Chicago. Along the way, he also had to make a stop at a store in Ohio to drop off some items. The truck was loaded in the evening, and they stayed overnight in a parking lot near the base. The journey began early in the morning. Departing from the eastern metropolis along Interstate 90, the plan was to reach Ohio at night, unload, spend the night there and then head to Chicago the next morning. The route was very familiar to him, having driven it dozens of times before. Everything started off normal. On that morning, there was almost no traffic on the road. Traffic cops were still asleep, so Anthony decided to let his truck run freely under the closed hood and accelerate on the smooth road while he had the chance. Pittsburgh city center stayed behind as the road turned to the right. Before reaching Ohio, the city he thought he'd easily reach in about an hour, something unexpected happened. The truck suddenly entered an extremely dense fog. The sounds of the surrounding world instantly changed, becoming quiet, muffled, as if hearing through a thick layer of cotton. Internet signals became erratic. As a result, the navigation started displaying nonsensical information. Visibility sharply decreased, only able to see something within 10 to 15 meters. Cursing God and scammers, Anthony switched to slow mode and continued at a snail's pace. After about half an hour of torment, affecting the driver's nerves, 
the fog suddenly disappeared. Just like someone turned it off, it vanished instantly. Anthony sighed in relief, mechanically pressed the gas pedal, but after driving a distance, he began to slow down, eventually stopping next to a road sign. He looked around, staring at the road signs, clueless. Moments ago, he was speeding along a wide road, crossing fields, paved with high-quality asphalt. Now the truck was parked on a narrow, patched road, winding through grasslands. An unpleasant feeling of unease welled up in his heart. When he realized it, he understood from the road signs and the navigation display that he was now not a hundred kilometers east of New York but in a town called Bellevue, a thousand kilometers southwest. To get from this place to Interstate 90 to Chicago required over a thousand kilometers and at least fifteen hours. However, the clock still showed it was morning. And the clock displayed that Anthony had spent less than two hours behind the wheel. In other words, during this time, the truck, instead of moving a hundred kilometers east to Ohio, inexplicably shifted a thousand kilometers southwest. But this was impossible. If Anthony was scared, it was an understatement. According to him, at that moment, he felt a cosmic level fear. He stood on the roadside for a long time, trying to understand what had happened. But during that time, he couldn't find any reasonable, sensible explanation for this situation. It wasn't until the next morning that he reached Ohio, meaning 24 hours had passed. He didn't share the unusual details of this trip at work, fearing to be considered a mental patient. But a few days later, he couldn't explain the traffic camera finds on I-90. After this event, Anthony resigned from the transportation company serving a large retail corporation. Currently, he drives a small bus. Although his current salary is far lower than his previous job as a long-haul truck driver, he has never cursed God and his cultists as he did in the thick fog of Pennsylvania. Before I experienced this strange story, I was a long-haul truck driver. You could say that half of my life was spent behind the wheel. I traversed the entire country and then some. At that time, I was a bachelor with no one waiting for me at home, so I took on all the trips, even those others refused. So, all the holidays were mine. Then one day, on a cold winter day, they assigned me to Texas. The weather was not favorable, let me tell you, a fierce snowstorm was approaching, and the roads were nearly invisible. I wasn't in a hurry, I set out on a Sunday, and the delivery was due on Monday. So, I had plenty of time. I drove cautiously, not exceeding 50 miles per hour. There were almost no cars on the road. The sky darkened. I saw someone standing by the roadside, but he didn't wave, which people usually do to hitch a ride. I thought, maybe the guy is freezing, and his hands are too numb to wave. There were no villages around, and if I didn't give him a lift, he might freeze. I drove a distance, pulled over to the side. I glanced in the rearview mirror, and I couldn't see anything, the darkness was terrifying. I honked the horn, but he didn't come closer. I thought, perhaps he had collapsed, lying there waiting for help. I carefully reversed. He was still standing there. I aligned with him, rolled down the window. Why are you standing there? Where do you want to go? He remained silent, just standing motionless. Do you want a ride or not? The man turned to look at me. I saw his eyes were somewhat strange, as if there were no pupils, just all white. I thought it might be an illusion in the darkness, but fear began to creep in. I even thought to myself, why bother with all this? Never mind then, I shouted at him. Freeze if you want. I accelerated forward. As I passed the spot where the guy was, I saw him running alongside my vehicle from the fields. Can you imagine? So much snow, impossible to traverse, yet he was running. It was all so unnatural. 
such things weren't supposed to happen. I stepped on the gas. Looking at the speedometer, 70. Any faster would be dangerous, as I might end up in a ditch. I noticed he hadn't fallen behind. Suddenly, I realized he was no ordinary person. I don't know when he stopped chasing me, but I maintained the same speed until I reached Texas. After delivering the goods in the morning, I started the journey back home. The snowstorm was still ongoing. The wind was fierce, and there was almost zero visibility. Luckily, there were still five hours until daylight. Maybe I could make it home before it got dark. I drove again, not too fast, not too slow. I didn't dare to take risks. When I reached the spot where I had encountered that guy at night, I slowed down. I didn't even know why I was slowing down, as if someone had given a command. That's when I saw a human figure running towards me from the direction of the fields, getting closer. I immediately realized it was that strange thing. It couldn't be a person running in the fields like that. I hit the gas, and they kept getting closer, sometimes appearing in the snowstorm, sometimes disappearing. I looked to the left, and then... I almost fainted in fear, on the left side of the vehicle, two more figures were running alongside. You can't even imagine how I felt at that moment. If they caught up, I didn't know how the story would end. The speedometer showed 80. Those three guys kept chasing. Suddenly, one of them started running on all fours. Not only on all fours, but it started crossing the road horizontally. I seemed to feel myself hitting him. I heard the impact. Then, they disappeared. I woke up from my own scream. It turned out I had been screaming all this time while escaping them. When I returned to my hometown, it was already dark. I parked the car at the base and then went home. The guard asked me something, but I just opened my mouth and couldn't speak. I even thought I had lost my ability to speak due to fear. In any case, I stayed at home for three days, not daring to go outside. Later, I found out that outside my window were my neighbor and his friends, but things had already started. I wrote a leave application and then a resignation letter. I had a foreboding that if I continued working, this trip would be my last one. Thank God, I never encountered such trickery in life again. Once was enough, completely changing my life.